Well, that's just uncalled for. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV characters hated for stupid reasons. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at TV characters who are unfairly disliked by other characters in the show. To be clear, this list is about how other characters feel towards them, not the show's fans. We're only including live-action shows, so for cartoon characters, be sure to check out our list of the top 10 cartoon characters hated for stupid reasons. It's okay, Bob. Stay out of this! Sopranos, you go too far. Number 10, Kenneth Parcell, 30 Rock. We can't help but feel immense pity for the pathetic Kenneth. He never does anything to hurt anyone. Quite the contrary, in fact. I'm hiding from Kenneth. I don't want to get roped into another one of his terrible parties. He constantly goes out of his way to ensure the happiness of 30 Rock's employees. And he does it all with an enormous smile and a cheerful disposition. But despite his perpetual friendliness, he's regularly mistreated by those around him, particularly Jack, who literally does not seem to care if Kenneth lives or dies. I guess I just see the world the way I see it. Sure, Kenneth can be a little annoying and even a little creepy, but he certainly does not deserve the hate he gets. We just want to give him a big hug. You know what we've never done, Grizz? Fight each other. Whoa. <laughs> Easy, Ken. <laughs> you guys are my best friend. <laughs> Number nine, Alan Harper, Two and a Half Men. Alan certainly has his flaws, but he's by no means a bad person. Uh, I like red velvet cake and close up magic. <laughs> Crap. Now we have to throw him a party. He tries hard with his lazy son and hedonistic brother, playing the straight man to their ridiculous antics. He firmly believes that the universe will reward him for being a nice guy, even if it requires him to be a doormat. Are you going to be cutting the cake soon? Because actually I have a real party to go to. However, this backfires pretty dramatically. His son doesn't respect him, his brother looks down on him, and his ex-wife humiliates him at every chance. Instead of rewarding Alan, the universe seems to have it out for him. We don't blame him for snapping and eventually breaking out of his shell. I know when I'm being used, Judith. And not in a fun way. Number 8. Leonard Hofstadter, The Big Bang Theory If you need another example of the straight man in a comedy getting stepped on, look no further than The Big Bang Theory's Leonard Hofstadter. Really, Leonard? Are you going to have another one of your hissy fits? Hissy fits? I have hissy fits? Leonard is in a precarious position within his friendship group, as arguably the most quote-unquote normal member. They often resent him for wanting to socialize, try new things, and spend time with Penny. Why didn't you ask Leonard for advice about this? Ugh, because I already know what he'll say. Well, 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 you shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's just like he's here. Penny, in turn, often treats Leonard like the doormat he kinda is. Add in his inattentive mother who doesn't care about his accomplishments, and his controlling roommate, and you can see why Leonard is such an emotional wreck sometimes. You let a guy sit on me. He was dressed as Princess Leia and made a nice picture. Number 7. Britta Perry, Community The characters of Community usually bring the hate on themselves, and Britta is certainly egotistical, hypocritical, and dramatic enough to do it. But no one can deny that her heart is usually in the right place. Regardless, no one seems to respect her or her opinions. How do you pronounce bagel? I don't. Come on. Bagel. Ugh, you're the worst. She's constantly called the worst by those around her, and Abed even estimates that half of the people she meets don't like her. Do you like Britta? Sure, who doesn't? Over half the people that meet her? They can be put off by her vacuous mannequin face and her Jodie Foster severity. The study group is also prone to calling her a major buzzkill, especially when she goes off against the government and religion. Britta? What kind of lame name is that? Britta certainly isn't a saint, but we also don't think she's the worst. Number 6. Anne Veal, Arrested Development That's right, yam. Poor Anne is derided by everyone other than George Michael. You know, I kind of want to buy her a diamond. Her? While he's completely enamored, his family thinks that she's either bland and forgettable or repulsive. George Michael, um, I'm sure that Egg is a very nice person. I just don't want you spending all Damn. your money getting her all right. glittered up for Easter, oh. you know? Michael often forgets that she exists, and when he does remember, he isn't afraid to show disappointment at his son's choice of girlfriend. Yeah, I invited her. You, you said you wanted to spend some time with her. You said I was being an Anhog. Anhog's coming? I mean, I thought it was just, just gonna Anne. be like the two of us. He even has various demeaning nicknames for her, including Egg and Anne Hogg. Wait, that's his girlfriend? Yeah. 
Is she funny or something? Don't, don't worry about it. Job hopes that she's funny or something, and her school forgets to include her picture in the yearbook. All this just because she's kind of boring and wears frumpy clothing. Number 5. Rachel Berry, Glee Yeah, Rachel is a bit of a diva and she can be controlling, but that's only because she takes the Glee Club and her prospective career in music very seriously. Despite this, she and the rest of the Glee Club are constantly targeted for being losers. But it gets worse for Rachel, as even the school losers think she's a loser. Everyone knows that Rachel is your favorite. That's not That's true. true. You, you give that skinny Geronimo wearing ass kisser everything. Everyone in the Glee Club constantly makes fun of her, bullies her, and even downright insults her to her face. Her vocal prowess is rarely given the respect it deserves because people either think she's showing off or hogging the limelight. She really can't win. Number 4. JD Scrubs JD is pretty much the perfect person, as his best friend Turk would probably tell you. He's intelligent, a great doctor, and hilarious, even if his sense of humor is rather goofy. Works every time. He also cares a lot about his patients. So why does everyone seem to hate him? No reason, really. While Cox loves and respects JD deep down, he still calls him women's names and generally treats him like crap. We're gonna be a team. We're gonna be a team, 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 team. You hear me? I hear you, Dr. Cox. I am so not speaking to you, Rhonda. Thank you. Kelso hates him because, well, he hates everyone. The janitor bullies him for no reason. You're afraid of escalators. That's not uncommon. You like the way cashmere feels on your skin. How are you doing this? And even within his friend group he's talked down to, particularly by Turk and Carla. He's certainly the punching bag of scrubs. Follow my voice! I'm coming! Well, either him or Ted. Number 3. John Locke, Lost While Locke's decisions on the island gave people solid reasons to hate him, his life before the crash was a different story. So who do I talk to about adoption? After his mother put him up for adoption, he was moved from foster home to foster home and bullied in high school. As an adult, he was conned by his parents into giving his sick father a kidney. And just when his life couldn't possibly get worse, his own father pushed him out of a window, breaking his neck. The injury forced him into a sedentary office job, where he was regularly insulted by his boss. Wow, John, you're really doing it, huh? You tell Helen yet? Helen? Oh, what's this, Locke? You've actually got a woman in your life. That's none of your business. No wonder he took to island life. Number 2. Tyrion Lannister, Game of Thrones Game of Thrones is filled with despicable and hateable characters. One word, and I hit you again. I'm telling Mother! Oh. But there are also just as many characters who are hated on without deserving it. Sansa Stark has been the subject of exceptional cruelty, as has Jon. Yet perhaps none is as loathed as Tyrion Lannister. All oh, my life, you've wanted me dead. His father and sister accuse him of killing his mother, who died giving birth to him. And pretty much everyone fire shots his way for being a dwarf. Few take him or his opinion seriously, and his own father barely recognizes him as a person. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh, yes I am. I've been on trial for that my entire life. All this despite Tyrion being the smartest and most level-headed Lannister. There's our brave men knocking at our door! Let's go kill them! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You know what, has anybody seen my glasses? I don't even think I can. You be proud. Don't talk. Why are you talking all the time? Bones said don't talk. You want me out of here. I get it. No, it's fine if you stay. The place I was going to move, the guy never called, I otherwise said, I'd already be there. It's fine if you stay. Yeah. That's why you're making me miserable. Maybe I just want to make sure you do your fair share around here. What are you doing about moving out? I don't know. How about Donna? I don't know. Your job? I don't know. Your future? Okay, I am going to go ahead and hit you with an... I don't know. Okay, guys, memorize these lines, okay? We need to seem like it's coming off the cuff. All right, plus, she didn't even feel a thing. What? What? That's the punchline to Mac bang banging our mom. She didn't even, she didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, D, Jesus Christ, your timing is so bad. Number one, Toby Flenderson, The Office. 
Michael's hatred of Toby is one of the hallmarks of the office. Why are you the way that you are? As the human resources representative at Dunder Mifflin Scranton branch, Toby constantly has to shoot down Michael's dumb ideas, like inviting children to a booze-fueled Hooters catered casino night in the warehouse. Suck on this. Michael, in turn, despises Toby with every fiber of his being, and he is certainly not afraid to show it. throws a goodbye Toby celebration, screams in disappointment when he returns, No! God, please, no! No! and says that he would shoot Toby over Hitler or Bin Laden. If I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden, and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. No. Oh. That's, uh, okay. You were All right. really funny, and then you went too far. Michael tries to be a funny guy, but we don't think he was joking when he said that. There are toxic working relationships, and then there's what Michael and Toby have. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.